welcome uh, to my talk about uh, virtual, uh, virtualized uh, network infrastructure for virtual machine clusters. Um, unfortunately, we have some te technical difficulties with the Zoom client, uh, so I can't present my slides at the moment. So it will be my face and audio only, unfortunately. So, yeah, let's begin. And so, sorry for the so, sorry for the delay. So some background. Uh, why would you want to do that? Why why would you try to do everything on the, the VM cluster? Well, in my case, it was the situation that um, we only had limited uh, rec space available. Um, the IP network um, is routed via a transfer network. Uh, so the problem is that uh, it has to be routed somewhere. And um, the, pro the problem was that uh, it, being an HA cluster, it was not really an option to just route it on one, uh, to, to just route it on one, uh, on one of the three hosts, because then we have a problem when that host goes down, which kind of sucks in uh, the whole uh, high availability concept. So um, a small overview over the concept. So uh, we have uh, two VMs for routing that are obviously run on two different hosts. We have uh, floating IPs for high availability uh, failover. We have some minimal uh, firewalling on it because uh, most of the VMs are administrated independent, more or less independently. So central file, uh, firewalling is a bit of a, is a bit hard. On the other hand, we centralized uh, we do centralized filtering for stuff like oh, somebody by accident installed an NFS daemon or something like that, which you really don't want to uh, expose to the internet, and there is very little um, reason why it should be done anyway. And uh, the last component that has to be run somewhere is that uh, we have to have an HTTP and TCP with SNI uh, reverse proxy uh, because we have, well, like most people nowadays, we have limited IPv4 addresses. Um, given that in this case it's for an NGO and we don't pay for the co-location, we can't hardly complain about having not get, getting unlimited IP addresses. But we do have uh, more than enough IPv6 addresses, so that's not a problem. So. Um, from the, the selection, there was some. I had some discussions, and I've, I've had some brainstorming on how could we uh, implement that. And the final, uh, the, fi the, 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 the selection was that we use our CARP for the floating IPs. We use a PF for the parts of firewalling that we actually do. Um, as an operating system, uh, we tried uh, both FreeBSD and OpenBSD. Um, as I will uh, talk about later, it's mostly um, FreeBSD now because uh, of some problems we ran into where I was quite more comfortable debugging it on the FreeBSD and I didn't have time uh, to look too much into OpenBSD at the moment. Uh, well, then we have some PF sync to sync the firewall status and uh, HA proxy as a reverse proxy. Um, so, short overview: what's the what is the the disadvantages of doing it in the VM? So, depending on the available bandwidth, uh, you might uh, run into performance bottlenecks a bit faster with the VM than. If you do it uh, with a physical machine that is correctly sized, um, it's also less complicated for the initial setup because uh, setting up the VM cluster when you uh, do the routing via VMs is a bit 
of the problem and you need to uh, build uh, temporary constructions that can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, also, it tends to be a lot easier uh, to the work and uh, debug, uh, work with and debug problems if you have any problems in the HA cluster itself, because if you need to have at least one VM running to have full access to the cluster, uh, it gets quite a bit annoying uh, to debug stuff. Um, what's the advantage? So why did we decide to do that? Um, well, the obvious thing is, well, you don't have any extra cost because you don't need any extra hardware. Um, the other thing in our case was that, well, you don't need any uh, extra rec space. And a nice bonus is uh, that you don't need to maintain hardware that you don't use for firewalling. So you ha don't have any extra hardware that you have to look into. So um, some of the tests and findings that uh, we ran into. So uh, we ran into major performance problems. Um, I mean, I expected some uh, problems, but uh, it ended up being kilobits instead of the gigabit link that we had, which was really strange. Um, it was also that some of the problems didn't really behave the same on two different uh, virtualization clusters, which had well, the same the same Proxmox virtual uh, environment stack with uh, KDM as a uh, as a hypervisor, um, but uh, obviously diff oh, well obviously uh, in this case slightly different hardware, which was uh, which we will also have to come to later. Um, there was also some really strange problems that uh, it behaved differently if the routing VM was on the same cluster node than the uh, uh, than the VM that I tried to talk to. And uh, after some further debugging, uh, we had some interesting packet loss and uh, quite some uh, broken or missing TCP and UDP packets. Um, yeah, then we had some debugging, which because of time constraints uh, and being slightly more familiar with it, uh, I for now only did in one combination uh, more intensively, which was uh, KVM host and uh, FreeBSD as the guest routing operating system. Um, the problems were to some degree similar, but they were not the same. One interesting thing that I discovered is that, interestingly, virtual network interfaces have hardware offloading features, which I did not really expect. And I'm not sure why it's, what the virtual device, why it would want to uh, um, why or where a virtual device would want to hardware offload to. Um, some findings that we had. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was also some uh, interesting problem that we ran into uh, on a slightly later stage on debugging because the original plan was to run the internal network IPv6 only, because basically everybody of the, the admins does have IPv6 access, so why not? And we have enough public IPv6 addresses. Uh, turns out that some uh, widely used stuff that's for the, the cloud native community uh, uh, depends on stuff that is not uh, available via IPv6, like GitHub, or at least at the time of writing uh, Docker Hub, that there's some, I heard some things that they might change at some point, but yes. Um, okay, there's some error in the slides. Um, yeah. Uh, what's also something that I ran into was that uh, 
live migrating the active uh, routing VM also created some interesting chaos with the, the carp state that led to no traffic being routed by either of the uh, either the, the moved VM uh, or the other one. And I have to further figure out what's going on there. I mean, it's not a major problem in, in, in the practice because, well, given that you always have to, you either don't need to move it for rebooting the host or you just uh, shut it down, move it and, and put it up. But it's still something that's quite interesting. So some fixes. So uh, I basically disabled uh, all the, the TCP and UDP um, hardware uh, um, offload stuff. So I disabled uh, the RX and TX checksum offloading. I disabled the TCP segmentation uh, offloading and the TCP large receive and large send offloading. Um, on the I had to disable them on both the external and the internal interfaces. Um, I also had some interesting workarounds on one of the clusters where I actually ha also had to disable the hard all the hardware offloading features on the physical uh, interface on the host because that also made uh, had uh, created problems. Um, it was in this case, so the the hardware is a bit different because one of the uh, one of the clusters is uh, built with relatively new hardware, uh, with uh, um, super micro motherboard and Intel uh, uh, 210 uh, NICs, and one was built with uh, an older uh, Intel NIC. I'm not 100% sure which one. Uh, on, from the top of my head, but it's uh, it's older hardware, so it's uh, still it's probably six or seven years old by now. So some maybe some uh, things about the manageability of the whole thing. So the uh, so you have you have the problem that um, if something goes wrong, and unfortunately we have to plan for that, um, it's uh, there, there's, there are some problems apart from the, the initial setup problem. So how do you access uh, the VM, uh, the routing VM, if there is if you somehow managed uh, to uh, to kill the, the routing because you made some error in the configuration, which well, I mean, while it shouldn't happen, it's well, it it will at some point happen. Um, the one thing is that so because the the problem is that uh, I I ran into the situation where I do not have SSH access uh, to the to the IPs. So the only way I could still um, uh, still access the hosts was via an out of band management VPN and the graphical uh, console of the so that the Java virtual console of the RPMI interface, which is quite a pain to work with, but it's better than nothing. So what can you do to be able to access the uh, to the end in that situation. So one option is at least for some of the, the error conditions would be to have an SSH key on the virtualization host that can access the VM, which obviously creates some security problems because you basically just poked holes into your security isolation. Um, something a bit nicer is uh, to configure a serial console so you so that you can at least uh, somehow attach to the uh, to the respective uh, Unix socket that will be presented for it. 
Um, also, if you use uh, FreeBSD with uh, uh, CFS, you have the option of doing boot environments because you can just uh, boot the new config with a boot once option and then basically kill and reset the, the, the config and the VM in that way to uh, get it back. Um, and another problem is obviously uh, the config should be identical, well, apart from the, the local IDs. And uh, in our case, uh, I decided to use Ansible for that. I mean, obviously you could use whatever configuration management system you, you want. Um, but, uh, well, yes. So, some further work where I still need to do some more um, investigation would be I would want to try more combinations of, on the one hand, hardware, but also more uh, hypervisor and guest combinations so that um, the uh, so, so that the uh, so that I can best better isolate on if the problems are ran into are they are they in the hypervisor are they in the specific FreeBSD driver I had some interesting problems uh, with uh, virtual interfaces in FreeBSD on a slightly more high load situation before uh, when running uh, when running uh, 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 when running a Tor node in a in 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 the uh, inside of the VM. So that was so that that could be, but it could also be a problem with the hypervisor. It could also be a problem with the interaction with the uh, hardware drivers of the host. So I would definitely want to try uh, Beehive VMs um, and then ideally both OpenBSD and FreeBSD as a guest. Um, I definitely want to do some, I, I definitely need to do some minor cleanup. It's mostly done now uh, from the Ansible playbook so that I can publish them if anybody is interested in it. Um, but uh, even, even so, uh, you have to, uh, I also there, I need to expand it a bit to really make sure um, that everything, uh, that, that everything is, uh, is the same because they, they tend, sometimes people uh, tend to edit by hand for, <laughs> for debugging stuff and then you have, you run into interesting problems. And so yeah, that's the the basic gist of it. So is it uh, so from 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 my side? Is it advisable to do it? Well, it's 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 definitely nicer, in my opinion, uh, to have hardware available if it's there. Um, but uh, if it's not there. Well, I mean, before you can't run the infrastructure, definitely why not? I mean, there are some uh, reasons why you could run into that problem. I mean, in our case, it was because we were, lim we were offered uh, a, a certain amount of rec space, and also we currently didn't have the hardware available, but we could probably have gotten that uh, somehow because it's not that expensive. Um, but the um, so but but how to best put it uh, but it was uh, so so it was not really available to us there so because we wanted to use the the colo um, we had to we had basically had to do it um, the other thing is also obviously I mean it's uh, it's it's uh, also, also I mean there are locations I had that before where you basically ho uh, you basically rent only relatively cheap um, servers where uh, 
uh, hosts that are not that flexible. I mean, Hetzner, for example, is not that flexible. I mean, yes, of course, you could rent further machines. I mean, there you usually don't have the problem of the, the rooted networks, or at least it's sli slightly different. Yeah. Um, some other further work is also that uh, I might need to integrate uh, PGP routing there because we have the I also have the situation at another co-location where they won't do the they won't do the high availability of the multiple uplinks via PRP, but instead want to use uh, want to use PGP. So that's also an option. Um, ah, and one thing that I forgot about uh, in the in the in uh, in in the in the beginning. So we decided to use CARP, um, which is really great. But uh, if your host runs uh, VRP in the same collision domain you need to coordinate with them because otherwise you will run into problems. Um, so I, I rushed a bit because I was, um, uh, because we started so late and I wanted to go through uh, everything. But I think at least I got the basics of everything. Uh, yeah, so um, also, for the practical implementations at the moment, uh, the HA proxy runs on a dedicated VM somewhere else uh, because uh, it turned, uh, so because somebody else uh, ended up maintaining that. And since uh, this admin wasn't that comfortable with FreeBSD, it ended up being uh, a Linux VM. So, well, I mean, uh, that's, that's, uh, an important um, decision also when you deploy stuff that the admins need to be comfortable with running it because otherwise uh, every system will become insecure over time. I mean, the, the best system, if you don't know how to use it, uh, will at some point uh, be able to create problems, which is also one of the reasons why I focused on FreeBSD for the moment. So I will have a look. So I'm I'm basically done 